Hello everyone. I want to talk about backgrounds for collages. I do collage in a three-step process. I usually do more than one page at one time. Uh, I like to make a signature and I like to do uh, the backgrounds first and then I come back and I put focal points on and then the third part is to come back and uh, cover up any white spots, put a little bit of detail, pictures, um, uh, do a little bit of doodling, you know, just finish up the page. So the first part, of course, is the background. Now, I have a few things that I do when I am doing backgrounds. I will get a pile of papers out and I like to rip my pages, my papers, when I am making backgrounds. I like the looks of the torn edges in the centers of my pages. It tends to blend the page, uh, the background together a little bit better if there's not straight edges making little boxes. So I tear my pages and I put the straight edges on the edges of my page. So paper, when you're tearing it, there is a grain. It would be easier to find the grain of a paper. Um, you find the grain of the paper, it, it tears straight. If you're, if you're tearing with the grain of the paper, you tend to, to, to tear a little bit straighter. Sorry. Um, if you're tearing against the grain, it tends to curve a little bit. It, it's not quite as straight. So I, uh, I work with that. I like a little bit of shape to my pieces. So I try to find the grain and try to tear against the grain. So I have some different shaped pieces. So when I'm putting my pieces together, I put the straight edges on the outside and then blend the inside with the torn edges. It just, it, it looks better for me. When I am putting pieces down on the background, I do leave some white spots. This um, forces me to put focal images in places that I would normally, wouldn't normally think about putting them. So I randomly have these spaces that I'm going to want to cover up with something. So in my part two, that's where I put things to look at. I also like to use large pieces for my background. Um, it tends to make the background less busy if you've got a, a lot of large pieces. Um, and it's easier to see your focal points on top of, of large images large large pieces. So I wanted to talk about straight edges. Now here is a tree that's got straight edges and I've talked about this before. In the natural world you don't see images with straight edges when you're looking around. Your eye catches the straight edges and it, it registers that there's something wrong with this picture. So that's why I don't like the straight edges inside my collages too much. I do leave straight edges when I'm doing a glue book because I'm using magazine pictures on top of magazine pictures. Uh, the glossy nature of the magazine pictures tend to let those magazine pictures blend a little bit easier. But when you're using different kinds of paper, it really is obvious those straight edges, just they box things in and you really don't want that in your collage. So torn edges, here's another tree with the torn edges. Torn edges take away the straight edge. Your eye is not looking at a straight edge and wondering why there's a straight edge there. It blends the papers in the background easier and it just makes the background um, better. So I like to have torn pieces. Okay, so um, let me show you some of these backgrounds. Um, 
I like to use large pieces. I can't stress that enough. Large pieces for your background. It goes faster. The page blends together easier and it's less busy. So here's a background. Not very many pieces on it. And this is my test image and she works okay on that. Here's an image that has a little bit of contrasting bits. I don't like to use too many um, papers that have too much contrast to them. Your images tend to get lost in high contrast. Um, this one works a little bit better than some because the colors are pretty much the same and the edges of each of the pieces are torn so that helps blend it together and it does it helps too that she's um, nice and dark and she kind of stay, stands out so here is an image or a background with some little bits of image in the background these aren't really focal points um, they just add a little bit of interest, kind of like backup singers. Uh, you still see your focal point, and you don't really notice these ladies in the background in, unless you're really looking at the collage, and then you can see the little details. They come, you know, they, they make themselves known. Um, they kind of add interest. So here's a magazine image of a window. It's kind of dark. Uh, it's a high contrast. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. You just have to play around with it. Um, this time my focal image, she kind of blends into that dark spot of the window. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You just kind of have to look at it and decide if you like that or not. I try to use these kinds of things. I look at the page before I start gluing um, just to see if it's too much contrast. I kind of I try to stay away from too much contrast. And here's another one with a lot of contrast, all this dark, with all the buildings, a lot of color, you know, a lot of stuff is going on on this image. And when I put my focal point on top, she kind of gets lost in all of that. So that's something, you know, I may not want to use that in a background. Here is a background that is extremely busy. It's got a lot of colors. It's got a lot of contrast bits. It's got a lot of small, little tiny um, um, prints in, in there. Um, this is really a busy image and when I put my focal point on top she gets lost in there you can't really see her very well um, this is why I stay away from small little bits in my background it's just it's too busy it's too much stuff going on I've got some straight edges I've got too many colors um, you can get around if you this kind of thing. If you have done an image that you or a background that you really want to use but you think it might be just too busy, you can put a layer of gesso over it. It will tone it down. It will blend that con those contrast bits together just a little bit. Or you can use watered down acrylic paint in a white or a light color. If you water it down enough um, you'll still be able to see the images underneath but the paint will blend your background together a little bit better. So um, the points that I want to leave you with for backgrounds, use large pieces. It's okay to leave the little white spots, but use large pieces. Um, use torn edges in the centers of your pages and the straight edges on the edges the straight edges tend to you know distract your eye use when you're using doing a page um, 
stick to the same color family. Don't go crazy and, and pick five different colors. Um, you can use uh, images in the background, uh, but not focal images. You want something a little interesting, but you don't want uh, the focal images in the background. Backup singers are good. You know, you don't want your lead singer in the background. Um, use low contrast um, prints and um, use different scale of prints. Use a large, a large um, design um, with a small design and, you know, the fonts text, that kind of thing. It adds interest to have different um, scale prints. Um, and I think that's everything. So I will be coming back with um, focal points. Thanks for watching.